Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. In this episode, I'm going to be reviewing the Mead 10-inch LX200 ACF Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. This telescope can be bought as a package on a dual fork mount with the electronic go-to function and the AutoStar hand controller and GPS. But this telescope I bought OTA, optical tube only. The telescope comes with a Lozmandy style dovetail bar mounted to the bottom of the telescope, allowing it to be attached to any mount that accepts a Lozmandy dovetail. This telescope comes with the advanced coma-free ACF optical system and ultra-high transmission coatings, UHTC. It has an oversized borosilicate primary mirror, a glass corrector plate, and incredible diffraction-limited optics. The ACF optical system, I believe, is now on all Mead Schmidt Cassegrain telescopes, and it allows the telescope to achieve aplomatic performance, a flat field all the way across the entire field of view with no coma or distorted stars at the edge of the field of view that I detected. So this telescope has the identical optical system of the other Meads, the Mead 12 inch LX90 I own and the Mead LX85 8 inch have identical optics. I reviewed those telescopes in other videos. The Mead 10 inch LX200 was manufactured at Mead's plant in Tijuana, Mexico, and the primary mirror, secondary mirror, and corrector plate glass are made in the United States for Mead. Before I continue explaining the positives and negatives about this telescope, let me explain how I got the telescope. I was looking for a 10 inch telescope to take on my camping trip because my 10 inch Dobsonian wouldn't fit into my Jeep Wrangler. And I saw a Mead 10 inch Schmidt Cassegrain listed on Craigslist for local pickup for very cheap. This Mead 10 inch Schmidt Cassegrain retails for the optical tube only for 2,650 US dollars. But this lady was selling this telescope for only $750. It was too good to be true. There had to be something wrong with it, but it was cheap enough, so it was worth going to check it out. So I immediately called her and I asked her if I could come over and look at the telescope right away. I'm on my way to that lady's house who has the 10 inch Mead Schmidt Cassegrain for sale for very cheap. And I'm going to her house to look at it right now. I think there's her house right there. Okay, let me find somewhere to park and let's see what she's got. Are you Sula? Yeah, I've come to look at your telescope. Nice to meet you. The telescope is in here. I put it on a blanket on the floor. Okay, let me have a look. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, it's beautiful. Oh my goodness, wow. Oh my word. The corrector plate is pristine. I barely use it because it's way too heavy for me and I, it's too heavy for me to heft it up on the mount and I nearly dropped it the first time I used it. And then I realized it's just really too big and I need oh, to sell wow. it. Oh, wow. It's beautiful. I'll take it. I brought $750 cash. You brought cash? Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thanks. Oh, thank you so much. This is a beautiful telescope. Thank you so much. Holy you got cow, it? this thing is okay. heavy. Oh my Enjoy. God. No, I don't need any help. I can get it to the car myself. Thank you. Take care. Bye now. Yeah.
my new telescope. Oh, Jill was not kidding about this thing being heavy. Oh my goodness. So this lady loved this telescope, but she said it was just too heavy for her. I own a Mead 8 inch LX85 Schmidt Cassegrain, and I can easily maneuver that telescope into just about any mount. This Mead 10 inch LX200 is only two inches bigger aperture than my LX85 8 inch. It can't be that heavy, right? I know I'll need a really hefty mount to hold this telescope. Uh, I think my Lasmandi GM8 or my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro would hold it fine. I was going to use the Ioptron Has 46, but I don't like that mount. I tried to put this telescope on this mount the other night, and I nearly dropped it. But today, my sister is here to help me. I got it into the saddle. Go on the other side and make sure it's in the groove on the other side of the telescope. Look if it's on the, is it in the groove? Yes, that side was. This side's not. You gotta turn it. Okay. All right, now it is. Now, are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now I'm looking at NGC 6960, part of the Veil Nebula. I can't see it now because I turned that light on, but before I turned that light on, it looked wonderful, very clear, beautiful. According to Orion Telescopes, who acquired Mead a few years ago, the Mead 10 inch LX200, quote, offers large aperture in a very compact form designed to be portable and lightweight, end quote. I'm sorry, but this telescope is not portable and lightweight. The telescope weighs 26 pounds, but that's with nothing on it but the dovetail bar attached. Once I added the 8x50 finder scope, the tail rad, the teleview adapter, a botter, diagonal, a 40 millimeter eyepiece, the telescope actually weighed 29.9 pounds. My Mead LX85 8 inch, which is identical optics to this t LX200, only weighs 12 pounds, I think. So why the jump from 12 pounds for the 8 inch to 30 pounds for the 10 inch? The differences between the two telescopes are that the one is 8 inch aperture and uses a Vixen style dovetail bar and the other, the one I'm reviewing today, is 10 inch aperture and uses a Lasmandi style dovetail bar and it comes with mirror lock. My guess is that the mirror lock adds a lot of weight. All the weight on this telescope is at the back of the telescope where the primary mirror is located, which makes it a little awkward to maneuver and handle and get on the saddle of the telescope mount. Now I realize some of you will say 30 pounds is not much. Well, from what I can tell, 95% of amateur astronomers are men. And it's just a sad fact that men, as a general rule, can lift more than women. And that's why they have separate events in the Olympics for men and women. Well, for the other 5% of us amateur astronomers that are women, like me, I personally think that 30 pounds is a lot to heft above shoulder level, especially for women in my age bracket. So personally, and I'm just speaking for myself, I think 30 pounds is a lot and would not um, describe it as portable and lightweight. The eight inch is portable and lightweight, but the 10 inch is a beast. And I had a very hard time getting it onto the saddle of the Ioptron Has 46 or on the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro or the Lasmandi GM8. In fact, one evening I was trying to put this telescope onto the EQ6R Pro mount and I had a firm grip on this handle with my right hand, which is my non-dominant hand, so that I could tighten the saddle with my left hand. 
well, the telescope overwhelmed my right hand and it started to droop and I couldn't hold it. It oh gave my, my right oh. wrist a bruise and carpal tunnel syndrome, mm. but I wasn't going to smash my telescope. So I stuck my left leg under it to prevent it from crashing to the pavement. And it made a cut and a bruise on my left leg. I did eventually get the telescope onto the mount, but sadly, I think I need a second person to help me safely put this 10 inch telescope onto a saddle. I can do it, but it's difficult because I'm petite. I'm five foot two and I weigh 112 pounds and I can't get this telescope up onto the saddle when I can't see the saddle after that. It's very difficult. This is a good little anecdote for all you young amateur astronomers out there to hear to illustrate the point that I've been making in other videos about paying attention to the weight of a telescope you're considering purchasing. It's not just whether you can lift it today, but whether you'll be able to lift it when you get older. Just something to think about. For me, the telescope is heavy. And <laughs> that is my one and only complaint about this telescope. Other than that, um, I think this is a fantastic telescope. The optics are superb and impressive. When I received the telescope, it was well collimated. And I took this telescope camping for two weeks and I was very impressed with it. And despite the telescope bumping around in the back of the car for two weeks, it remained collimated for the entire trip. Everything I viewed in the night sky looked great. There weren't any planets to look at, but I was looking at some deep sky objects and I didn't notice any astigmatism, no coma whatsoever. I didn't try to split any double stars with it, but I'm sure it wouldn't have any problem splitting difficult double stars because it has a resolving power of 0.46 arc seconds and a limiting stellar magnitude of 14.7. The highest useful magnification on this telescope is 300 times, but on a night of exceptional seeing, you could push it to 500 times, theoretically. So the optics are nothing short of amazing. and what you would expect from a Mead telescope. Let me explain about the mirror lock I mentioned previously. The mirror lock is a feature that allows you to lock the mirror in place once you have it focused on an object you want to view or photograph. And this prevents the object from going out of focus or what's called image shifting. It's a feature that is added to schmidt cassegrain telescopes primarily as a benefit to astrophotographers who don't want the object going out of focus when they're imaging, thereby ruining the photo. And it can be used by visual astronomers too, but so far I haven't really used the mirror lock. Honestly, I think this telescope is, um, doesn't have very much image shift when I've been observing. Personally, for me, and this is just my personal preference, I would prefer a lighter telescope that doesn't come with mirror lock than one that comes with it, but that's just me. If you're an astrophotographer, I can see you really appreciating the telescope having this mirror lock feature. And speaking of astrophotography, this telescope can be used for astrophotography. The telescope has a 2,500 millimeter focal length and a primary mirror of 250 millimeters, giving it a focal ratio of f10. And that's very slow for astrophotography. But you can use the telescope for astrophotography by purchasing the Mead 0.68 focal reducer to convert the telescope to um, f6.8 instead of f10 significantly reducing your exposure time. It also expands the field of view by 50%, allowing you to image much larger objects. And with this whopping 10 inch aperture, you'll be able to take stunning images of the moon and the planets 
without the need for a focal reducer. In fact, you don't want it for the moon and planets. The telescope comes with a single speed focuser, but if you want dual speed, you can replace this standard focuser with a Starlight Instruments dual focuser or a Crayford style focuser like this one that I mentioned when I reviewed the 12 inch LX90 Meech mm -hmm. McCaskrain telescope. So after using this telescope extensively for the past two weeks on my camping trip, I can tell you that the optics are beautiful and you will not be disappointed in what you see through this telescope with your eyepiece or your photos. I have zero complaints about the telescope's optics. It performed wonderfully in that department. The mirror lock is a nice feature to have if you're interested in astrophotography and you can shorten your exposures by purchasing the Mead Focal Reducer or one made by other companies such as Antares. My only complaint about this telescope is that it's very heavy and at 30 pounds, you'll need a very hefty mount that can handle that much weight. I don't think the telescope is at all portable or lightweight as described by Orion's website. In fact, I hope to permanently house this telescope one day or put it on a JMI wheelie bar so I give this telescope 4.5 stars. It's a very nice telescope, and I'm only not giving it five stars because it's too heavy. It's 30 pounds and that's too heavy for me. And you need a heavy, beefy mount to hold it. Now, if you want a dew shield, you can get one that fits this telescope from Farpoint Astro and if you want a carrying case, you can get this padded case that has two handles on it from cases and covers made by Pacific Design out of Santa Cruz. And other than that, this is a great telescope and I highly recommend it. So that's it for my review of the Mead 10-inch LX200 ACF Schmidt Cassegrain Telescope. I'll see y'all soon. Until then, Get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.